Welcome to a Screwed Generation production. Hello, YouTubers. This is a video for those who are serious about knowing what Russell thought about 1914 and Armageddon. You know, just like the video I made on 1975, it's going to be a bit long. So this is only the intro, where I'm talking right now. We'll go on showing the scans right after. So, uh, Russell did teach that the end of the world was for 1914. Uh, of course, when we say the end of the world, I don't mean that the, the, the planet would disappear or be uh, destroyed or anything. But rather that the rule of imperfect men would end in 1914 and then would follow the kingdom of God in 1914-1915. So uh, Jehovah's Witnesses disagree and they say that, oh no, it's not true, he never taught that. And the Bible students that still exist today, they say that, oh no, he changed his mind around 1910 and he didn't teach that anymore, he realized he was wrong. So that's only part, partly true. What really happened, Russell for many years taught that the end of the world was for 1914 and the Kingdom of God would start. He also taught that... Uh, before 1914, there would be great anarchy, lots of trouble. Things would get worse and worse and worse, and that those would be the sign that the end of the world was coming. But things eventually got better and better, and he started having doubts. So in 1907, he started expressing his doubts in the Watchtower. He had also predicted that 1910, from 1910 to 1914, there would be a rapture of the church. So when 1910 came, and he didn't get raptured, uh, he mostly started expressing doubt, heavy doubts, uh, on his, about his chronology towards the end of 1910 and towards 1911, uh, at the point of partly denying his chronology and saying it was wrong, and it would happen later on. Uh, the end of the world was pushed back for another 20 years, but when the, the First World War came around, about mid-1914, mid then he started holding on to his chronology once more and saying, hey, I was right. I was right. It's a good thing I didn't quit on the chronology. So uh, then he started saying the end was probably for 1915, and then eventually 1918, but he died in 1916, and Rutherford took over preaching 1918, and then eventually 1918-20, and then 1925. So we're going to examine this. We want to examine 1925. I'll just put one or two quotes. But uh, the video is going to be in two parts. 1914, pretty much 1914 uh, is going to be the first part. The second part is going to be First World War. It's going to be the second part. But through these videos, we'll see 1914. We'll see the doubts, we'll see the changes of Russell, we'll see 1915, 1918, 1920, and we'll see a very, very little bit of 1925, but maybe one or two quotes. Uh, so, uh, so this is the intro, so now we're going to see the scans, and I hope you enjoy the video. Zion's Watchtower, the building of Zion. We have no doubt that Zion, as used in scripture, is double aside from its being the name of a literal mountain. It represents the city of the Lord, Jerusalem, but which? There are two Jerusalems, the old and the new, the earthly and the heavenly, and two nations of churches corresponding, the Jewish and the gospel. Some apply the text wholly to the restoration of the earthly Jerusalem, and others apply it only to the su success in some way of the Gospel Church. Perhaps it is most commonly applied to what is familiarly called a revival of religion. We believe such prophecies apply primarily to the building up of the Old Jerusalem by restoration and in a higher sense to the building up of the New Jerusalem by glorification and that both will be accomplished in one and the same day, the Day of Rat, or the 37 years on which we have entered, reaching to A.D. 1914. 
To build up Zion implies a process, and so far as relates to the earthly Jerusalem, includes the restoration of the Jewish nation or Israel according to the flesh in all its parts, and we believe in its application to the gospel church, the same must be true. That from 1878 to 1914 is the last half of the last trump, has often been shown, and also that this is the period during which Jerusalem is to be restored. The last or seven trumpet covers the day of wrath, angry nations, and the time of reward for prophets, saints, and them that fear God's name, small and great. All Christians, whatever their grade of development, are thus included. Some occupy a position with Christ in his throne as a reward of their faithfulness, while many serve him before the throne, but all are included in the heavenly city, and that city descending in its completeness and glory as the light of the nations is called the bride, the Lamb's wife. Paul also says, at or during the last trump, and it has often been shown that the last or seven trumpet sounds for many years. Without ear given the proof, which has often been given to many of our readers, we would say, we believe the seven trumpet will continue to sound until the year 1914, which includes, between now and then, the day of wrath and angry nations, which is the period not only of restoration of the earthly Jerusalem, but of reward to the church, or the upbuilding and glorification of the heavenly Jerusalem. In Leviticus 26, the expression seven times is four times repeated in reference to the duration of the rule of its enemies over Jerusalem. It has often been shown that this is the basis and key of the times of the Gentiles, or the duration of Gentile rule over Jerusalem. A time is a year. A prophetic year is 360 common years and has been so fulfilled. A time, times and a half, or three and a half times, has been fulfilled as 1260 literal years in the papal dominion over the nations between AD 538 and AD 1798. If three times and a half are 1260 years, seven times are 2520 years. From BC 606, where the desolation of Jerusalem began, 2520 years reached to AD 1914. According to this application of the number seven, Jerusalem will be free at that time and thenceforward be a praise in the earth. The application is clearly confirmed by the events of today, the trouble brewing among the nations and the beginning of Jewish restoration. The prophetic argument of the two dispensations show that favor was due that to that people in 1878 and the door was legally opened for their return by the Anglo-Turkish Treaty of that year. From 1878 to 1914 is a period of 37 years for their rise and is equal to the period of their fall from the time Jesus left their house desolate in AD 33 until their complete destruction in AD 70. As Jesus gave up the nominal church at the close of his three and a half years ministry, because they knew not the time of their visitation, so here too, at the parallel point of time, 1878, we believe the nominal church to have been given up and the spewing out of his mouth to have begun. As the Jewish house was shown some special favor for three and a half years, the latter half of their covenant week, so we expect some favor to continue with the nominal gospel church for three and a half years or until the autumn of 1881. As with the Jew, a period of 33 years of trouble followed the seven years of favor, so we understand there will be upon Christendom, so-called, a period of 30, 33 years of trouble, making with the preceding seven years the 40 years of trouble or day of wrath, ending with the time of the Gentiles in 1914, when the kingdom of God, soon to be set up or exalted to power, will have broken in pieces and consumed all earthly kingdoms. The 
day of vengeance of our God is the time of fire or purifying trouble in which the world and all the church except the low flock are to be tried and purged and made ready for the blessings of the millennial age. It is this day of the Lord in which from the prophetic evidences we believe we have been since 1874 and which we believe will continue with increasing severity first on nominal Zion and secondly upon the world until 1914. The first seven years of which, as ear for to shown, are years of favor and end in October of this year. The Finished Mystery As our readers are aware, we understand that we are now living in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. The evidence has already been furnished and will appear again in the forthcoming Millennial Day Dawn, that these trumpets mentioned by the Revelator and by Paul are symbolic of a series of events. The sixth of these, we believe, ended August 11, 1840, since which we have been living under the seventh trumpet, or last trump, or trump of God, which continues until the kingdoms of this world, by a great time of trouble, become the kingdoms of our Lord. This, prophetic scriptures show, will not be fully accomplished until A.D. 1914. This is called the trump of God, probably because during its period of time God exercises, exercises his great power over the nations, breaking them in pieces and grinding to powder the abominable systems of error which have so long flourished and made desolate and void God's word of truth. And another thing, God during this period will finish the mystery by letting his saints come to a full appreciation of his glorious plans. View from the Tower In our next, we expect to show that the first six plagues will be upon the nominal church, Babylon, the results of which will be to gather or array the people and their rulers against each other, and that this general conflict between priest and people, rulers and ruled, capital and labor, is the battle or conflict represented by the seventh plague, the conflict of the great day of God Almighty, in which all oppression and bondage shall cease, by the overthrow of the great and mighty in church and state, a preparation for the true king of earth to exercise his authority. This will not be fully accomplished as we read prophecy until A.D. 1914. As we find the 40 years from 1874 to 1914 AD prophetically marked out as the time for the change of Earth's administration, it would seem not unreasonable to suppose that the proper physical changes might occur during the same period. Not that we expect all changes to be completed in the specified 40 years, but that by that time the new systems and arrangements will be thoroughly introduced, which will be gradually improving and will reach absolute perfection at the same time that mankind in general will reach absolute perfection by restitution. Thus the perfect earth and its perfect Lord man will both be prepared to enter upon the ceaseless ages of perfection into which shall never enter sin, death, pain or sorrow. Thus seen, there will be no occasion for others to enter the tomb when the kingdom of heaven has been fully established in the earth, which we understand will be about 1914 AD. The great physician, the Christ, will then be among men in power and the work of healing and restoring all things, but faintly foreshadowed by Jesus' earthly miracles, will commence. The resurrection work will progress both with those who are in their graves and also those not so far down in the dark valley of the shadow of death, 
and all will have the strength and help provided by which they may regain the mountaintop of human perfection and life which Adam lost the right to through sin, but which right was redeemed for all by Christ. In this chapter, we present the Bible evidence proving that the full end of the times of the Gentiles, i.e. the full end of their lease of dominion, will be reached in A.D. 1914, and that that date will be the farthest limit of the rule of imperfect men. And be it observed that if this is shown to be a fact firmly established by the Scriptures, it will prove, firstly, that at that date the kingdom of God for which our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Thy kingdom come, will obtain full universal control, and that it will be then set up or firmly established in the earth on the ruins of present institution. Secondly, it will prove that he whose right it is thus to take the dominion will then be present as earth's new ruler, and not only so, but it will also prove that he will be present for a considerable period before that date, because the overthrow of these Gentile governments is directly caused by his dashing them to pieces as a potter's vessels, and establishing in their stead his own righteous government. Thirdly, it will prove that sometime before the end of A.D. 1914, the last member of the divinely recognized Church of Christ, the royal priesthood, the body of Christ, will be glorified with the head, because every member is to reign with Christ, being a joint heir with him of the kingdom, and it cannot be fully set up without every member. Fourthly, it will prove that from that time forward Jerusalem shall no longer be trodden down of the Gentiles, but shall arise from the dust of divine disfavor to honor, because the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled or completed. Fifthly, it will prove that by that date or sooner Israel's blindness will begin to be turned away, because their blindness in part was to continue only until the fullness of the Gentiles become in or in other words, until the full number from among the Gentiles who are to be members of the body or bride of Christ would be fully selected. Sixthly, it will prove that the great time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation will reach its culmination in a worldwide reign of anarchy, and then men will learn to be still and to know that Jehovah is God and that he will be exalted in the earth. The condition of things spoken of in symbolic language as raging waves of the sea, melting earth, falling mountains, and burning heavens will then pass away, and the new heaven and new earth, with their peaceful blessings, will begin to be recognized by trouble-tossed humanity. But the Lord's anointed and His rightful and righteous authority will first be recognized by a company of God's children while passing through the great tribulation, the class represented by M and T on the chart of the ages. Afterwards, just as it's closed, by fleshly Israel, and ultimately by mankind in general. Seventhly, it will prove that before that date, God's kingdom, organized in power, will be in the earth, and then smite and crush the Gentile image, and fully consume the power of these kings. Its own power and dominion will be established as fast as by its varied influences and agencies, it crushes and scatters the powers that be, civil and ecclesiastical, iron, and clay. In view of this strong Bible evidence concerning the times of the Gentiles, we consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdoms of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished at the end of A.D. 1914. Then the prayer of the church ever since our Lord took his departure, thy kingdom come, will be answered, and under that wise and just administration, the whole earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord, with knowledge and righteousness and peace, and the will of God shall be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Be not surprised, then, 
when in subsequent chapters we present proofs that the setting up of the kingdom of God is already begun, that it is pointed out in prophecy as due to begin the exercise of power in AD 1878, and that the battle of the great day of God Almighty, which will end in AD 1914 with the complete overthrow of Earth's present rulership, is already commenced. The gathering of the armies is plainly visible from the standpoint of God's word. In the preceding chapter, we presented evidence showing that the times of the Gentiles, or their lease of dominion, will run fully out with the year AD 1914, and that at that very time they will all be overturned and Christ's kingdom fully established, that the Lord must be present and set up his kingdom and exercise his great power as to dash the nations to pieces as a potter's vessel is then clearly fixed, for it is in the days of these kings before their overthrow, i.e., before A.D. 1914, that the God of heaven shall set up his kingdom, and it shall break in pieces and consume all these. And in harmony with this, we see all about us evidence of the beginning of the smiting, shaking, and overturning of the present powers, preparatory to the establishment of the kingdom which cannot be moved, the strong government. The next chapter will present Bible evidence that 1874 A.D., was the exact date of the beginning of the times of restitution and ends of our Lord's return. Since that date, he has been verifying his promise to those in the proper attitude of watchfulness. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. He has shown us, first of all, that it is a harvest of the saints, a time for their full ripening and for their separation from the tares and secondly, that it is a time for the world to reap its whirlwind harvest, for the reaping of the vine of the earth and the treading of its fruitage in the winepress of the wrath of Almighty God. He has shown us that both of these ripenings will be completed in a period of 40 years, ending with the year A.D. 1914. The Jubilee cycles prove that our Lord Jesus was due to be present and begin the restitution work in the fall of 1874 A.D., and the parallelism above referred to shows that date, 1874, to correspond exactly with the anointing of Jesus as the Messiah at the beginning of the Jewish harvest at the first advent. The Gentile times prove that the present government must all be overturned about the close of A.D. 1914, and the parallelism above shows that this period corresponds exactly with the year A.D. 70, which witnessed the completion of the downfall of the Jewish polity. A reasonable question, then, in view of all this is, are these time correspondences mere accidents, or are they the same divine ordering which we have seen arranged in the other affairs of the fleshly house as shadows of the realities of this dispensation? No, they are not accidents. Undoubtedly, the same all-wise one who taught us through the chronology that 6,000 years from Adam's creation ended with A.D. 1872, and that the 7,000, the millennial age, began there, who through the Jubilee cycles taught us that the Lord would be present at the times of restitution begin in the fall of 1874, and who through the times of the Gentiles showed us that we must not expect these things to be done in haste, but by seemingly natural means covering a period of 40 years. Remember that the 40 years Jewish harvest ended October 8069 and was followed by the complete overthrow of that nation and that likewise the 40 years of the Gospel Age harvest will end October 1914, and that likewise the overthrow of Christendom, so-called, must be expected to immediately follow. In one hour, judgment shall come upon her.
But with reference more particularly to the time and order of events in this harvest, we must refer the reader to the succeeding volume of the series, wherein the conclusions of the foregoing and other time prophecies are brought to a focus, and the various foretold signs and corroborative testimonies of the Master's presence and the progress of his work are marked, proving that the time of the end has come, that the days of waiting for the kingdom are fulfilled, that the cleansing of the sanctuary is accomplished, that the great harvest work is in progress, that the regathering of Israel is ap apparent, that the battle of the great day of God Almighty is impending, and that the complete establishment of the glorious kingdom of God at the time appointed, the end of the times of the Gentiles, is an unquestionable certainty. And showing further the work of the saints during the harvest, marking the close of the eye calling and the change of those saints who are alive and remain, and showing also that the great pyramid of Egypt is one of God's witnesses, whose wonderful message is a full and complete corroboration of God's plan of the ages, together with its times and seasons. Now remember, he said that it's an unquestionable certainty. It is astonishing with what rapidity matters are shaping themselves for the great time of trouble predicted in the scriptures. When some 14 years ago we presented the scriptural declaration that the millennium of peace and blessing would be introduced by 40 years of trouble, beginning slightly in 1874 and increasing until social chaos should prevail in 1914, few believed, some scoffed, for the old cry then was peace, arbitration, harmony, hoped for through increasing intelligence. Gradually, the storm clouds have been gathering since 1874, so gradually that many have failed to notice the great changes of public sentiment already accomplished. Yet many are now waking up, and the inquiry is heard. Where will matters end if present conditions continue? Ah, the answer to this query can be given from no earthly source. The word of God is the only de revelation of what lies behind the veil of futurity. It declares trouble more general and greater than the earth has ever yet known. That troubles financial, polit political, and religious will fill the earth with distress. That there will be no ire for man, no ire for beast, nor any peace to him that goeth out or to him that cometh in. Because every man's hand shall be against his neighbor. Yet this is not all. For in connection with these changes necessary to prepare for the millennial kingdom, will come some physical changes to the earth, incidental to its preparation for increased fertility and for rest from storms and cyclones, that it may be more suitable for the race in the times of restitution. We have thus shown that 1799 began the period called the time of the end, that in this time papacy is to be consumed piecemeal, and that Napoleon took away not only Charlemagne's gift of territory, 1000 years after they were made, but also afterward the papacy's civil jurisdiction in the city of Rome, which was recognized nominally from the promulgation of Justinian's decree, A.D. 533, but actually from the overthrow of the Ostrogothic monarchy, A.D. 539, just 12, 1260 years before 1799. This was the exact limit of the time, times and a half, of its power as repeatedly defined in prophecy. And though in some measure claimed against sins, papacy is without a vestige of temporal or civil authority today. It having been wholly consumed, the man of sin devoid of civil power still poses and boasts, but civilly powerless, he awaits utter destruction in the near future at the hands of the enraged masses, God's unwitting agencies, as clearly shown in Revelation. This time of the end or day of Jehovah's preparation, beginning A.D. 1799 and closing A.D. 1914.
the fall, plagues, destructions, etc., foretold to come upon mystic Babylon, were foreshadowed in the great trouble and national destruction which came upon fleshly Israel, and which ended with the complete overthrow of that nation in A.D. 70. And the period of falling also corresponds, for from the time our Lord said, Your house is left unto you desolate, A.D. 33 to A.D. 70, was thirty-six and a half years, and so from A.D. 1878 to the end of A.D. 1914 is thirty-six and a half years, and with the end of A.D. 1914, what God calls Babylon and what man calls Christendom will have passed away as already shown from prophecy. This measure is 1542 inches and indicates the year BC 1542 as the date at that point. Then measuring down the entrance passage from that point to find the distance to the entrance of the pit representing the great trouble and destruction with which this age is to close. When evil will be overthrown from power, we find it to be 3457 inches, symbolizing 3457 years from the above date BC 1542. This calculation shows A.D. 1915 as marking the beginning of the period of trouble for 1542 years B.C. plus 1915 years A.D. equals 3457 years. Thus the pyramid witnesses that the close of 1914 will be the beginning of the time of trouble such as was not since there was a nation, no, nor ever shall be afterwards. And thus it will be noted that this witness fully corroborates the Bible testimony on this subject as shown by the Parallel Dispensations in Millennial Dawn, Volume 2, Chapter 7. So in this article here, we'll see the, the rapture of the body of Christ for 1910 and some sort of limit of 1914 for the complete selection of the body of Christ. I don't exactly know how this works, but here goes. Of the trouble coming upon the world, we may well accept as correct the testimony of the great pyramid that the last members of the body or bride of Christ will have been tested and accepted and will have passed beyond the veil before the close of A.D. 1910. Is not this a most remarkable agreement between the stone witness and the Bible? The dates October 1874 and October 1881 are exact, while the date 1910, though not furnished in the scriptures, seem more than a reasonable one. Though the Bible gives us no exact date for the end of this trial of the church, it does give us, as we have seen, a date limit previous to which it must certainly be concluded. And in this connection, let us remember that this date limit, A.D. 1914, must not only witness the completion of the selection and trial and glorification of the entire body of Christ, but it must also witness the purifying of that larger company of consecrated believers who, through fear and faint-heartedness, failed to render acceptable sacrifice to God and who therefore became more or less contaminated with the world's ideas and ways. While it was an agreeable surprise to us, in view of the contrary sensational accounts so often published, to find the situation in Europe as we here describe it, in harmony with what the scriptures had led us to expect, yet so great is our confidence in the word of God, and in the light of present truth shining upon it, that we could not have doubted its testimony whatever had been the appearances. The date of the close of that battle is definitely marked in the scriptures as October 1914. It is already in progress, its beginning dating from October 1874, thus far it has been chiefly a battle of words and a time of organizing forces, capital, labor, armies and secret societies. Can it be delayed until 1914? 
17 years ago, people said concerning the time features presented in Millennial Dawn, they seem reasonable in many respects, but surely no such radical changes could occur between now and the close of 1914. If you had proved that they would come about in a century or two, it would seem much more provable. What changes have since occurred, and what velocity is gained daily? The old is quickly passing, and the new is coming in. Now, in view of recent labor troubles and threatened anarchy, our readers are writing to know if there may not be a mistake in the 1914 date. They say that they do not see how present conditions can hold out so long under the strain. We see no reasons for changing the figures, nor could we change them if we would. They are, we believe, God's dates, not ours. But bear in mind that the end of 1914 is not the date for the beginning, but for the end of the time of trouble. We see no reason for changing from our opinion expressed in the view presented in the Watchtower of January 15, 92. We advise that it be read again. There are some of God's people in all parts of the world, and their number is increasing daily, who do realize fully and thoroughly these very things, and who are doing all in their power to gather together unto the Lord all who are his consecrated ones, seeking to separate the wheat from the tares, and to prepare them for the garner, the kingdom. And to these we must look expecting to hear from them the great voices announcing the kingdom. We might say that the volumes of Millennial Dawn have to some extent been such voices announcing the kingdom and giving the reasons for believing that it began to be established in 1878, that it will reach full establishment in October 1914, and that ultimately it shall bless all the families of the earth. These voices have been circulated here and there throughout the old civilized world, not by worldly agents, not through booksellers, but by those who have themselves been blessed by the light and who desire to render a service to the Lord and to the truth and to lay down their lives for the brethren by taking to them the glorious and encouraging message now due to the Lord's people. We receive many queries respecting the probable duration of present prosperity. That question no human being can answer satisfactorily. The world's wars being over and the great war expenditures stopped would naturally mean that prosperity has already crested and is on the decline. But who knows what may come of the Venezuelan trouble or similar difficulties with other states through the new program of great powers that the claim of private bondholders against the smaller nations may be collected by force? Who knows that this program and the Monroe Doctrine may not clash so as to bring about one of the greatest sea wars of modern times? Or something else of which we as yet have not a surmise may come forward suddenly to give business a fresh spurt. So far as the scriptures guide us, we expect the climax of the great time of anarchist trouble in October 1914. Our opinion is that so great a trouble would necessarily last in violent form at least three or four years before reaching that climax. Hence, we expect tenuous times by or before October 1910. And this agrees well with the corresponding and typical trouble with which the Jewish age ended. An Astrologer's Outlook we seriously question all the claims of astrology, yet the following, from whatever source the suggestion come, even though of the adversary himself, seem remarkably true to our expectations based upon the word of the Lord. For this reason alone we present them here, as follows. Jupiter must also transfer his allegiance from the grasping Saturn to the newly discovered factor that stands for universal brotherhood, namely Uranus. When Uranus and Jupiter meet in the humane sign of Aquarius in 1914, the long-promised era will have made a fair start in the work of setting man free to work out his own salvation, and will ensure the ultimate realization of dreams and ideals of all poets and sages in history.
it will be vain for Zionists to hope to establish an independent government in Palestine. None of the civilized nations would favor putting the land of promise wholly into their control, and if they did, God would not favor it. Palestine will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be full, viz. October 1914 AD. By that time the heavenly kingdom will be in power, and the ancient worthies Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the holy prophets will be resurrected and constitute the earthly representatives of the spiritual and invisible kingdom of Christ in and his bride, the Gospel Church. Universal Anarchy, just before or after October 1914 AD. What seems at first glance the various trifle and wholly unrelated to the matter has changed our conviction respecting the time when universal anarchy may be expected in accord with the prophetic numbers. We now expect that the anarchy culmination of the great time of trouble which will precede the millennial blessing will be after October 1914 AD. Very speedily thereafter, in our opinion, in one hour, suddenly. In a recent issue, we showed that the universal anarchy should not be expected before October 1914-80. We have recently heard of two dear brethren who, not grasping the subject very clearly, got the impression that we in that article were declaring, My Lord, the late is coming. Other new readers, not well informed, may possibly need a further word to show that neither the time of the coming of our Lord nor of the establishment of his kingdom are in any degree involved in the date of the final anarchy. Our Lord's presence, as shown in Millennial Dawn, Volume 2, dates from October 1874, where the forty years' harvest began, of which he is the great chief reaper. The date for the final anarchy in no sense affected. April 1878 marks the date of the establishment of the kingdom, as shown in the same volume. At that date was due the resurrection of the sleeping saints who died overcomers, thus the establishment of the kingdom commenced. It has since progressed as one after another of the same class have since died and been changed in the moment of death. The kingdom will be fully established or set up by October 1914, as already pointed out, for that date closes the forty years of harvest and accomplishes its design, the gathering of all the wheat into the garner of the heavenly condition. Question. If the times of the Gentiles can be changed as suggested in the July Tower so that the anarchy will follow 1914 AD instead of preceding it, might not similar changes be made in respect to all the various lines of prophetic time proofs set forth in Millennial Dawn, Volume 2 and 3? Answer. You are entirely in error. Not a figure, not a date, not a prophecy is in any sense or degree affected by the article to which you refer. Indeed, the harmony and unity of the whole is the more fully demonstrated. Read again the article you refer to, Universal Anarchy, etc., July 1st issue, and you surely will see this. If it is not apparent to you upon a further study, let us know the particular point of your difficulty, and we will endeavor to make it plain. The harmony of the prophetic periods is one of the strongest proofs of the correctness of our Bible chronology. They fit together like the cogwheels of a perfect machine. To change the chronology even one year would destroy all this harmony. So accurately are the various proofs drawn together in the parallels between the Jewish and the Gospel ages. It would affect the ending of the Jubilee cycles, the 1335 days, the 2300 days, and the times of the Gentiles, throwing out of gear all the wonderful harmonies of these in the parallel dispensations. We commend to you a fresh and careful study of the presentations of Dawn's Volume 2 and 3 on these points. Evidently, the time features of present truth all stand or fall together, and we see no weakness or sign of their falling. On the contrary, everything throughout the world is confirmatory of them.
The above thoughts came to us as we recently read the predictions of some noted astrologers whose information we credit to the spirit demons and not to ability to read destiny in the stars. One of these in particular closely touches dates and incidents on the line of our scriptural expectations as follows. Astrological Predictions of Our Time In a dozen publications of this present springtime over all Europe, astrologers agree that an extraordinary period is approaching. In the first place, Saturn enters the sign of the fishes in April 1905 to remain there during 1906 and 1907. He will come out only in July 1908, and these conjunctions, most rare in astrology, promise to be particularly hard on France. For France, at least, peace will not be re-established until 1914, when a warrior king, he who is to establish the reign of good, will set things to rights. This Caesar Imperator, realizing the astral reproduction of Napoleon I, will commence to manifest his presence in 1914, and will be definitely crowned in 1916 or 17. Until then, alas, poor France. Knowledge and Fate Regarding Chronology A dear brother inquires, Can we feel absolutely sure that the chronology set forth in the dawn studies is correct, that the harvest began in A.D. 1874 and will end in A.D. 1914 in a worldwide trouble which will overthrow all present institutions and be followed by the reign of righteousness of the King of Glory and His Bright the Church? We answer, as we have frequently done before in the dawns and towers, and orally and by letter, that we have never claimed our calculation to be infallibly correct. We have never claimed that they were knowledge, nor based upon indisputable evidence, facts, knowledge. Our claim has always been that they are based on fate. I never read that before. We have set forth the evidence as plainly as possible, and stated the conclusions of fate we draw from them, and have invited others to accept as much or as little of them as their hearts and heads could endorse. Many have examined these evidences and have accepted them. Others, equally right, do not endorse them. Those who have been able to accept them by fate seem to have received special blessings not merely along the line of prophetic harmonies, but along all other lines of grace and truth. We have not condemned those who could not see but have rejoiced with those whose exercise of fate has brought them special blessings. Blessed are your eyes for they see, and your ears for they hear. Twisting the scriptures again. Possibly some who have read the dawns have presented our conclusions more strongly than we, but if so, that is their own responsibility. So it's your fault. We go humbly onwards, following the apostles' example and words, we believe and therefore speak. Whether others hear or forbear to hear, is not this in accord with the Spirit of Christ? Is it not in accord our Lord's instruction also, forbid him not? And again, what is, it, what is that to thee, follow do me? Scriptures out of context. But some of those who come to a trifling point on which they disagree seem to imagine that the entire harvest work must be overthrown or at least stopped until they get their little jot or tittle satisfactorily adjusted. Such evidently make mountains out of molehills. And forget that if the present movement among the Lord's people is the harvest work or under the Lord's supervision at all, the Lord is responsible, so the Lord is responsible for false prophecies, and not they, and can be trusted to accomplish his own ends in his own best way without the violation of either the letter or spirit of his commands. If with these suggestions some shall lose their fate in our chronology, fate in chronology? Others, and many more, we believe, will have their faith in it strengthened greatly. We remind you again that the weak points of chronology are supplemented by the various prophecies which interlace with it in so remarkable a manner that faith in the chronology almost becomes knowledge that it is correct. The changing of a single year would throw the beautiful parallels out of accord because some of the prophecies measure from B.C., some from A.D., and some depend upon both. We believe that God meant those prophecies to be understood in due time. We believe that we do understand them now, and they speak to us through this chronology. Do they not thereby seal the chronology? They do to fate. 
but not otherwise. Our Lord declared, the wise shall understand, and he told us to watch, that we might know, and it is this chronology which convinces us, who can and do receive it by faith, that the parable of the ten virgins is now in process of fulfillment, that its first cry was heard in 1844, and its second cry, behold, the bridegroom, present, was in 1874. yet seven years more. From the foregoing, it will be seen that to our understanding, Christendom entered upon the final seven years of harvest time in October 1907. Promptly on time, the present panic gave Christendom a convulsive tremor, and it is our anticipation that the entire seven years thus started will witness a succession of panics and difficulties, each pressing a little more upon the interests of mankind the rich as well as the poor, and each bringing conditions to a little harder plane than its predecessor, until, with the close of the seven years, during 1915, according to the Bible, yes, according to the Bible, we expect that anarchy will gain the upper hand of control throughout Christendom, overthrowing present institution, civil, civil and religious, financial and social, and in a general way, plunging the poor world into the most awful trouble it has ever experienced, a trouble so dark, so terrible, that in referring to it, the master said, except those days be shortened, there would no flesh survive. Dear Brother in Christ, it is now about five years since I came into the light of present truth, and the Lord has blessed me with the privilege of having the six volumes of Dawn and the Towers from 1890, all of which I have carefully gone through and from which I have received a course of Bible study, a knowledge of our Heavenly Father and our dear Lord and the plans and purposes and my relation thereto, sufficient thanks for which would indeed be hard for me to put in words. I have practiced medicine here since 1889, and had quite an extensive practice up to the present time, and since coming into the truth, Sister Center and I have used up in the truth, one way or another, as we thought the Lord would have us use it, all above our living expenses, and a provision for those depending upon us, a reasonable one we hope, until 1914, by sending towers, dawns, etc., over the counties nearby, your brother in Christ, S.D. Center, Missouri. Here's an interesting letter published in the 1911 Watchtower, <clears throat> supposedly written by somebody else, but I believe it was written by Russell. I remember in uh, 1910 he had predicted the, r the rapture for the little flock, and of course he's supposed to be part of this, and it didn't happen. Here he is in 1911, and in this letter, uh, this letter demolishes or uh, destroys everything that he ever taught in three decades concerning 1914 and only he has the authority to take down the doctrine not somebody else writing a, a letter so here we go as to c.t russell your remarks in the january 1st tower in regard to 1914 are very sensible there is no flaw in the time prophecies concerning 1914 as set forth in the dawns but i would like to see an article from your pen on the subject what can we say we know about 1914, and what do we merely infer or guess? There are only two things stated in the time prophecies concerning 1914. One is that the lease of power granted to the Gentile nations expires then, and the other that the harvest period of the Gospel Age ends there. Everything in addition to these two bare facts is only an inference or guess founded on these two or on these facts. The scriptures nowhere declare that the time of trouble either begins or ends in 1914, nor that the saints, the bride class, will all be taken away at that time. These are only inferences, and no difference how reasonable these inferences seem, seem to us, 
We cannot know whether they are correct or not until after that date is passed. The case is the same with all that has been claimed for 1914, with the exception of the two things mentioned above. The fact that God's lease of power to the Gentile nations expires in 1914 does not necessarily imply that they will all fall to pieces in that year. Gentile nations existed for centuries before God gave them a lease of power, and as for anything we, we actually know, they may continue to exist for a short time after that lease expires. Both of these events, the time prophecies show, are due in 1914, namely the expiration of the Gentile lease and the completion of the harvest period, and yet nothing may happen in that year which the daily papers would specially record. The affairs of the world might apparently go on uninterrupted just the same as before. The earthly phase of the kingdom will be established later than 1914. In other words, during the same period that Israel would be having seven times of tribulation and subjection, the Gentiles would be having seven times of prosperity, and both will terminate at the same time in 2520 years from BC 606, October 80, 1914, the close of the Gentile times. If any be disposed to dispute the exactness of these figures, we need have no quarrel, but simply say that any difference in the calculation must of necessity be but small, possibly one year, possibly twenty years, but in so long a period, how trifling would be such a variation. The lease of power to the Gentiles may end in October 1914 or in October 1915. Finally, let us remember that we did not consecrate either to October 1914 nor to October 1915 or to any other date but unto death. If for any reason the Lord has permitted us to miscalculate, so it's the Lord's fault now, to miscalculate the prophecies, the signs of the times assures us that the miscalculations cannot be very great. And if the Lord's grace and peace be with us in the future as in the past, according to his promise, we shall rejoice equally to go or to remain at any time and to be in his service either on this side of the veil or on the other side as may please our master best. We think of October 1914 as, in round numbers, the ending of the Gentile times. As a matter of fact, however, the first day of October is not the end of the Jewish year, which varies at its closing just as at its beginning. It is regulated by the moon instead of the sun. The Jewish calendar can never depart from this fixed arrangement of regulation by the moon. The date 1914 is not an arbitrary date. It is merely what the chronology of the scriptures seem to teach. We have never said positively that the scriptures do so teach, that the Jewish favor will begin exactly at that time, or that the Gentile times will end exactly at that time. We say that according to the best chronological reckoning of which we are capable, it is approximately that time, whether it be October 1914 or later. Without dogmatizing, we are looking for certain events, the termination of the Gentile times, Gentile supremacy in the world, and for the inauguration of Messiah's kingdom in the world. The kingdoms of earth will come to an end, and the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. The scriptures do not say that the trouble will come in an hour, or in one day, or in one year. The intimation is that the catastrophe coming upon our civilization will be a very sudden one. But it will be very sudden if it comes within twelve months. The flood required many days to come, and many days to assuage. Brother Morton Edgar 
has recently issued a very neat little book dealing with the pyramid and corresponding in size and shape to the Karatal and India paper studies in the scriptures. It is an India paper, club bound, two shillings, fifty cents. We are informed that it treats the passages of the pyramid very critically and finds that many of the measurements are closely corroborative of the time features of the divine plan presented in the studies in the scriptures. We are advised that it gives seven different corroborative proofs that the close of the year 1914, namely about October 1914, will mark the closing of the times of the Gentiles and the beginning of the messianic reign. Many of the dear friends are rejoicing in these corroborations. We have received two letters inquiring about the practical bearing of our October 1914 hopes on the affairs of this life. It occurs to us that others who have not written may have the same thoughts, so we give to you all a digest of our answers. The brother who wrote us suggested that he is a farmer and that if sure that the church would be gathered before October 1914 or that the great time of trouble would there begin, he would in either case be inclined to quit farming and to spend the year in the colporteur work as he would have sufficient money to do this if he were to mortgage this farm or sell it. In our reply, we advised the brother that if he had a wife or family dependent upon him for support, we thought that this suggestion would not be a wise one at all. But if he were unencumbered, we would consider the thought a very good one. He would be merely giving a year to the, uh, to the Lord's work, and at the close of the year might hope in any event to be in reasonable health and as capable as ever of earning a living. We believe that a year spent in the colporteur work would prove an excellent schooling in perseverance and self-denial, in service of others, and in thinking upon and handling holy things. So here we see Russell encouraging him that if he has no family, to, yes, it's okay, it's a good idea, sell the farm or mortgage it. And then after one year, when the end doesn't come, well, it's your fault. You, take, you, you, you have to believe by fate. It's, it's not our fault, you see. And then the guy will be stuck having to go work at a measly salary for another farmer. So that's what Russell did to thousands of people. It is not our thought to deride any efforts towards righteousness, even though inspired by selfishness. We merely point out that the true Christian view of matters is a much different one. It is the Bible view. It recognizes God, the divine will, purpose, plan, revelation, as having to do with all this world's affairs. It sees in the presence of evil, of politics, the present uncovering of financial and social scandals, etc., another force making ready for the great trouble time, the great earthquake predicted in prophecy, the great cataclysm, now about to be precipitated upon the whole world. The scriptures indicate that this time of trouble will be upon us in 1915 and will be gradually approaching in the meantime. The war clouds silver lining, but after the shock of battle, what? Such a war as is now progressing will surely bring no great victory to any single nation or to any combination of nations. The winners in the war will surely pay a high price for every victory. Civilization, falsely styled, Christendom, Christ's kingdom, drenched with blood and terribly impoverished at the end of the war, will have been only partially shaken. The great Armageddon battle of the scriptures will have been only partially fought. The remnants of armies returning to their homes, sour and discouraged with defeat or costly victory, will be warsick and mad against their rulers who led to the carnage. Then the great Armageddon of the Bible may be expected. Every man's hand will be against his neighbor. Virus factions and parties will proclaim panacea and will endeavor to force them upon the public. As a result, foretold in prophecy, there shall be a time of trouble such as was never since there was a nation. 
the shaking process will continue, the apostle tells us, until Messiah's unshakable kingdom shall assert itself and take control of the world's affairs. Millions of people have had their attention drawn to the teachings of the Watchtower and the studies in the scriptures respecting are taught that the time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation is due sometime about October 1914. Eight million volumes of the studies in the scriptures are in the hands of the public, some who scoffed, railed, laughed, and talked about the impossibility of our expectations are startled by the suddenness with which the great European war has started. All admit that there never has been such a war before and that there never again can be such a war. Ignoring the Bible, all admit that the consequences of this war will be so terrible, the impoverishment of the nation so great that wiser counsel must prevail in the future. We see from the Bible viewpoint that the result of this war will lead up to the wrecking of our present civilization in a period of anarchy. Whatever way the war may eventuate, it will surely be unsatisfactory. Discontent will more than ever prevail among the masses. A reign of terror throughout the civilized world is to be expected as a result. All these things have been presented in our publications, sermons, etc. Also in the photodrama of creation, which already has been shown to audiences totaling more than four millions. This war is riveting conviction upon the minds of many respecting the correctness of our expectations. Their question is, what next? and they will not think of looking for an answer in the direction of the ministers of the nominal churches who they now know have been keeping them in the dark and trying to prevent their obtaining the true light from God's word, as it is now shining amongst the Bible students. Here's a letter published in the Watchtower, written by supposedly somebody else than Russell, but using Russell's language. For about a year it has seemed to be very strange that some of the friends are so inclined to question the accuracy of the chronology if certain events do not transpire by or about October of this year. It has seemed to me that the chronology should not be too closely associated with events that the present Savior did not startle the world with the bright shining of his presence suddenly in 1874, though he came at that date, that even the Jew was not aware of his favor in 1878, but it began, that Babylon did not feel its rejection nor topple over in 1881, but was spewed out and is no longer recognized, just the same while even yet after 33 years the world is not startled by the evidence, nor does Babylon believe it. Hence, I feel that, should the present order of things roll on for some time yet, we should not then doubt October 1914, any more than we doubt 1874, 1878, or 1881. But we should be watchful, prayerful, and keep our garments, awake to the fact that the chronology may be accurate, while our ideas of how the Lord will order events may be wrong. The Lord may permit seeming inaccuracies to test whether our consecration is to chronology or to Him and he may be as apt to wind up matters very suddenly as to seem to prolong them. Therefore let us have faith, but await his enlightenment as to events. Affectionately in him, S.H. Houston, Texas. The End of the Gentile Times Studying God's Word, we have measured the 2520 years, the seven symbolic times from that year, 606 BC, and have found that it reached down to October 1914 as nearly as we were able to reckon. We did not say positively that this would be the year. We merely left everyone to look at the facts of history and reckon for himself. Would this date be the time or would it be some other date? We asked. Many of us concluded that as far as we could see, October of this year would show the end of the Gentile lease of power. For when October comes, we are getting down to the end of the Jewish year. 
the year 1914 actually ended September 20, 1914, Jewish reckoning. Be not surprised then when in subsequent chapters we present proofs that the setting up of the kingdom of God is already begun, that it is pointed out in prophecy as due to begin the exercise of power in A.D. 1878, and that the battle of the great day of God Almighty, which will end in A.D. 1915, with the complete overthrow of earth's present rulership, is already commenced. The gathering of the armies is plainly visible from the standpoint of God's word. Although the year 1915 falls considerably short of previous years in respect to the society's activities in the promulgation of truth, nevertheless, this is one of the best reports the society has ever been privileged to render. It so impresses us because many of the dear friends who have been active supporters of the work in the past have been so generous, so fervent, so zealous that they left themselves with merely enough of this world's goods to properly maintain themselves and those for whom they had responsibility. Our expectations that the Lord's consecrated people might be taken beyond the veil by October 1914 had much to do with these previous activities, leading the friends to spend and be spent in the most marvelous way in the interest of the king and the brethren, heirs of the kingdom. So you see, Russell indirectly admits that 1914 caused the ruin of many Bible students and that many left the society because of this. As we see in the first three lines, he says, although the year 1915 falls considerably short of previous years in respect to the society's activities in the promulgation of their so-called truth. So why is there uh, less activity in the promulgation of their so-called truth for 1915? Because many have left the cult. So now if you have the strength to watch part two of this, this series uh, called The Watchtower and the World War I Armageddon, you'll see Russell claiming more things for World War I, 1915 and 1918. And then you'll see Rutherford take over with the same and even hinting at 1925. So I hope you enjoyed the video and please leave a comment below. Thank you.